look at some spin fishing um, uh, rigging as well. We'll keep that simple. With the bait fishing, um, we're going to take a look at two um, ways of bait fishing. Uh, we're going to look at fishing the bottom and fishing the top. Um, and this might be just a completely refresher for a lot of folks um, here, it seemed like by the poll, but um, it might be good to hear it from somebody else. Um, there's always kind of something to learn. I definitely always learn something listening to uh, fishermen talk. Um, and that's one thing we like to do. So um, I think next up, please, Nicole. First, we'll take a look at um, basic tackle or um, accessories kind of for tackle or for, um, for rigging, excuse me. Um, first up, that odd picture there um, is a swivel, um, the top left, and then kind of moving into the box top left, we've got some hooks, everybody knows what those are. Um, underneath the hooks, the small round um, weights are some split shots. And then next to that, we've got some, a couple different types of sliding uh, sinkers, come some bullet weights. Um, and those are all very popular um, items and needed for um, some of our basic rigging. Um, the, let's see. Next one, next slide, sorry, Nicole. Next accessory we're gonna look at is um, bobbers. So in the first box, we had a lot of weights, um, things that were used to fish at the bottom. Um, the bobber is uh, what we use to fish the top. So um, a lot of times in our, uh, specifically in our community ponds locally, we have um, a lot of vegetation that, that tends to choke the bottom of the pond in the summertime. So there's really no fishing um, the bottom. Um, there is no bottom. The, the vegetation takes up, you know, 10 feet of the bottom. So um, really the only way to target the fish in our, our community ponds in the heat of the summer is to um, go from the top. So we have bobbers where we can access or where we fish from them, or we can um, adjust our length or our depth that we're fishing um, from the top opposed to from the bottom. Um, excellent tool. Um, it's kind of the method I feel like that everybody learns with. Um, it's uh, visually, it's everybody recognizes that red and white bobber. Um, you see that and you think fishing right away. Um, what it does is it detects the bite. Um, in some cases, if they're buoyant enough, it actually will help um, set the hook, uh, depending on the hook that you're using. So um, a lot of good reasons to use a bobber, um, for sure. All right, next one, I believe. Perfect. Um, so this is kind of an array of bobbers. Um, I, for a long time, thought it was kind of hokey, some of, uh, some of these bobbers, uh, especially some of these guys on here, but um, I was uh, schooled recently. Um, I went out with a, a good friend of mine on one of the community ponds with our kids, and he pulled out a box of these um, balsa, very large bobbers, um, and salmon eggs and very, very light tippet. And I pulled out kind of the box of usual stuff that I do and set my kids up. And by the end of that afternoon, my kids didn't like me very much because they weren't catching very many fish, um, but he certainly was. So um, just his light tippet and the sensitivity on his bobber uh, made all the difference in the world. So um, some, of the, some of the designs are, are really fun, um, but they're certainly used kind of for different depths, different, different situations. Um, but the good old red and white will always, always work. Um, on notes up there, definitely use uh, bobber large enough um, to rent bait from dragging underwater or dragging it under. So I definitely want them good size. Um, their round barbers are the easiest to cast. Um, floats, pencil styles are easier to see when fish bites, just like I said, uh, it's more sensitive. So definitely some cool things um, about the bobbers and look at them, they're beautiful. Um, all right, how about some questions if there are any out there up to this point? It doesn't look like we have any questions in the Q&A box yet. Um, if you guys do have questions, the Q&A box is right there at the top of your toolbar or your toolbar may be at the bottom as you're viewing, but you can submit questions throughout the webinar and we'll take breaks to answer them for you. All right, how about the next one then? Nicole? Thank you. Okay, so there are a lot of knots out there. Um, 
I would not consider myself a not nerd, um, but I do know quite a few not nerds. Um, I know um, how to tie well four knots, um, and that is an arbor knot, um, an improved clinch knot, um, a Duncan loop, um, and a perfection loop. Um, the two knots that you heard me say that are on this list are the arbor knot and improved clinch knot are two that you absolutely have to know. Um, every fisherman, I feel like, um, it's kind of like automobiles, Chevy guys, Ford guys, there's, um, everybody's got a different knot. So um, before I start pushing knots on people, I make sure um, to find out if they're tying something that is, is kind of on the books, like a, a, there's a, there's a lot of different knots, an Orbis knot, a polymer, there's um, a lot of different knots out there. Uni knot, um, a regular clinch knot, Lots of knots um, is the idea. So if you know a knot um, that you attach your hardware to fishing line with um, and it works for you, doesn't break, I would say continue using it. Um, the one thing I would say about knots, uh, one thing that not a lot of people know is you really want to make sure that um, before you cinch a knot down or before you tighten a knot down, um, you get it wet. So you dunk it underwater before you really, really wrench on it and tighten it down and it keeps it from... Um, creating that friction. Um, and that friction a lot of times can uh, lessen your, your line strength by as much as 50%. So um, aside from that, I would say uh, the Arbor Knot here. Um, next slide, Nicole, sorry. Um, we use for attaching line to our reel. So, um, you know, it, it's a good one to know. I'm definitely doing, I would say that, that, that these two are definitely knots you have to know. Um, just in case you lose all your line, um, something happens while you're at, you definitely want an easy knot to be able to reattach. So um, the Arbor knot, pretty easy to know. Um, there's a million videos on YouTube on tying some of these knots. So I'm not really going to go into a lot of detail how to do it. But again, this is an easy one to do. A lot of people know it's a slip knot. Um, but again, one, one good one to know. Um, the next knot, Nicole. Thank you. Uh, the improved clinch knot. And, you know, I, again, this is the one that I learned when I was eight years old or seven years old. So this is the one that just kind of stuck. Um, I have a lot of friends that tie a, a standard clinch um, or the uni knot and some that have picked up, like I said, the Orbis knot. There's um, a lot of different knots that do the same thing. Um, and it's just, it's more important that you can tie it well than what you're tying, I feel like, especially when you're um, attaching it on like this. And I know um, everybody, again, kind of has their their own opinion on, on what works better. So um, I'm definitely open to trying new things, uh, but this is, a, this is a great one that, that works kind of for uh, most purposes. Um, again, there's a lot of different um, tutorial videos on YouTube that'll show you step-by-step step how to tie these. Um, I think one of them was Knots 101 where we um, got these. There's, there's a lot of places. Um, that's one thing there's no shortage of. Um, secrets to fly fishing maybe on the internet, but there's um, plenty of videos on knots. Um, okay, next one. Um, we can look at uh, some rigging here. So um, I talked about bait rigs. This would be one of those bait rigs on the on the bottom. Um, this would be a live bait rig. So it's got our um, our weight stationary in the rig. So um, everything moves together. Um, you kind of always feel everything move together. Um, this rig. Um, I'm not incredibly familiar with it because we don't do a lot of live bait here um, as far as uh, swimming bait, like you see there, uh, bait fish or minnows, but um, pretty easy method. Um, two, two improved clinch knots on both sides of that weight um, and another improved clinch knot um, on the hook is kind of all it takes to put that together. All right, next rig. All right, slip sinkers. Um, for us, um, up. Uh, kind of northwest, this is certainly the most popular rig that we have for fishing um, underwater or fishing from the bottom. Um, everybody kind of, again, probably has their methods, um, just like knots. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, uh, the way that, that Abby was fishing um, today is a little bit different than this, but it works just as well. Um, same idea. So um, a lot of different mouse traps, but they kind of all do the same thing. So slip sink sinker rig. Um, can be used um, for, for everything, um, even aside from catfish. So we use it for trout, for bass, for catfish, for um, everything. Carp, 
Um, and really the idea behind this, uh, this rig is uh, the fish is allowed to or can um, take the bait, what we're fishing, um, and pull, pull without resistance or with drag. So any resistance or drag that you're feeling um, is kind of sliding through that sliding sinker and you're feeling it directly on your rod opposed to dragging a weight kind of through the, um, the sand or, or along the bottom. Um, a lot of times fish will, will pick it up, feel that resistance and kind of let it go right away. So, you know, that's my tip if I have one um, for this, but that, that's the reasoning that we fish this, uh, this rig quite a bit. And again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. This is kind of my um, kind of a complicated way for um, to do it, uh, the way that Abby was um, uh, is going to show us here in a minute, or that we'll take a look at before we talk to her, uh, is, a, is a much easier way to do this. Um, but the idea here, just to kind of point out the main parts, um, we have the main line that goes up to the reel. Um, we have a sliding sinker, which is um, can be a bullet, it can be an egg. Um, the idea is it's got a hole in the middle of it, and it slides kind of up and down your your line. And then we've got a barrel swivel, swivel to break that or to keep it from going, um, the hook sliding all the way back to it. And then that barrel swivel has a leader or a section of monofilament uh, connected to your hook. Um, and uh, one good thing to keep in mind that, that a lot, I forget about a lot of times is, is knowing how deep, if there is vegetation or something you're trying to get above on the bottom, um, by fishing those floating baits, um, you can actually get your bait above some stuff on the bottom. You know, that only works so far. If you've got, you know, six feet of vegetation, it's, it's pretty hard to get it up and still feel the fish grab, but um, great rig, um, excellent. And again, I use it for just about, just about every species that we, we fish for here. All right, how about the next one? This, um, we'll take a look at a short video here, um, exactly how to put that sliding sinker together. Um, we've got some 30 pound mono he's working with here, so it's pretty easy to see kind of in detail um, how it all goes together. Hi, my name is Logan Klonicki, volunteer for the Nevada Department of Wildlife. Hi, today I'll be demonstrating on how to rig up using a bullet weight. You'll have your bullet weight, your main line, barrel swivel, leader, hook, and bait. So to start, you'll want to take your main line and put the bullet weight straight down it. And by main line, I mean your line that is still connected to your rod and reel. Then you'll take your barrel swivel, do a clinch knot on one end, of the barrel swivel, clinch that down, pull it nice and tight, then go ahead and cut that tag end off. And then you'll want to take your leader and do the same thing on the opposite end of that barrel swivel. Clinch that down, make sure it's nice and secure on there. And you go ahead and cut that tag end off. And then you'll go to the bottom of your leader and go ahead and attach your hook, again, using a clinch knot. Tighten that down. And cut that tag end off. Then you could go ahead and attach your bait to your hook. There's your completed rig. The barrel, barrel swivel stops that bullet weight from traveling all the way down to the bottom of your leader. This is a very versatile rig. You could use it for trolling off of a boat. You could adjust your leader length to control how high your bait will float. Or when you're bottom, bottom fishing and have a stinky bait on there when you're hunting for catfish. For more information on Fishing Nevada, including fishing reports, instructional videos and podcasts, as well as upcoming classes and clinics, find us on Facebook or visit us at endow.org.
And finally, we're going to take a look at um, what uh, Abby was fishing today, um, and is what, what she's going to show us here on her video. Um, but again, this is very similar to that, um, that, that sliding, um, what we just watched, um, the sliding sinker rig, um, but even easier um, because we leave the barrel swivel out. Um, so you don't have to mess with leader. Um, it's, it's definitely an easier way to, um, to get it done for sure. Jan, you muted yourself. <laughs> I have no idea how I did that. Um, how long ago did I mute myself? It was just a couple seconds. <laughs> okay, perfect. So um, next up, I believe Abby here is going to show us a video on what she did today, maybe. Um, if not, maybe take a look at some equipment. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Nicole, for getting us started tonight. So I will share my video. Um, I was hoping to be out at the pond, but just like it sounds like all of Nevada, because we're all in the three corners of Nevada for you guys tonight, um, we're getting hammered with wind. We're talking like 40 miles an hour wind. Uh, so I made a little video right before the storm blew in. Um, let me get that shared for you. And it's just going to give you a little idea of how I set it up. And then, um, like some of the comments in the chat, we can go over some alternates for actually having to use real bait or something like really gross too. So there are alternates. Um, fish like have a good sense of smell. So there's a lot of options. And then we'll go to the internet. There we go. Just outside of Lake Mead National Recreation Area and just east of the Hoover Dam. So conditions are rough. This is why I'm not going to record this live, but I am going to try to get you a full five minute video right now. So I have two fishing poles with me right here. We have a spin cast or I'm sorry, spinning rod and a number six hook, single hook, and a lightweight and split shot just like Jan had showed you. I'm gonna rig that up with a worm and actually power bait for the color. That seems to really work well. And then I do have a spinning rod as well and we're going to put a power egg because it's a um, J hook as well lighter weight there and um, this one I'm going to try with ham so honestly whatever meat old meat you can find in the fridge works really well I did see a little cat right when I walked up so my goal is to hurry up and get him before he loses interest so literally just got some ham from the convenience store because I'm trying to beat the weather right now. Um, also, I am not in a flood zone, but if you look right there, you can see the clouds rolling in. I have been out here when the rain comes, so <laughs> I'll be okay uh, getting back into town. And then some sliced chicken, because I do love chicken. So I'm actually gonna try the chicken first, just to save time. If you know something's gonna work better than something else, just do it unless you're out trying stuff or just hanging out for the day. So I'm gonna take half a piece of chicken and I'm not pausing the video. I want you to see how long it takes. I'm going to take the chicken slice, put it through once, put it through again, kind of a big piece, put that down and grab a power egg, put that in my pocket. So I really love just some natch or uh, some power egg with garlic and I like to mix them up. So I have like a half glittery yellow there. If this doesn't work, then we'll try orange next. And I do have regular power bait for more color as well. Oh. So I'm gonna pause it there. I ended up not being successful, but um, same 
rig system um, in that same pond um, when it's warmer. Bluegill are really good at uh, biting on ham. They do like to chase it a little bit. So you do set it and then kind of strip it in every once in a while if you don't get a hit. Uh, just very carefully, as you can see up here on the top, uh, there was a lot of algae. So definitely pick that up on the way in. But this is literally a power egg that you would use for trout. Um, and then when they bite it, uh, you just hook them right in the mouth and then they come right off and you don't have to keep the bluegill. Um, so that one's really good. And then go back. So this time last year was able to get my friend um, an awesome catfish out of that same pond, almost same conditions, um, not rainy, just windy and cold, uh, but it was a little bit later. And you can see a little chartreuse, that same one I um, put on the hook today, the little power egg, and we were able to get it right in the lip and pull it right in. So it, it is successful, just not tonight. Um, I believe it was too early and just uh, too much air pressure coming in. And then same with the catfish. Uh, we just actually, for this catfish, I believe we actually used hot dogs. Just grabbed the hot dogs out of the fridge or at the convenience store on the way out. Um, sometimes, you know, they run out of worms um, and ran out to the pond last summer. So they definitely like it when it's warm too. Um, and then same, um, that this was this year, right after free fishing day, because that's when they stock the bluegill again, and power egg and ham right up top. But I just definitely wanted to show you, we did the same rig system, and it can be very successful for you. Um, and you don't have to use a worm necessarily. This is sliced ham and chicken, and I do recommend the garlic power eggs or garlic power bait just for that smell. And that way it's a little more stinky for uh, the catfish and all. So I'll stop sharing there. And Cole can share again. So yeah, just to show you, oh yeah, thank you. Same thing. And then as part of our introduction, just want to remind everyone to be an ethical angler when you go out and about, um, especially in windy days or using a bobber like Dan was showing you guys, uh, the lines are gonna get wavy. So definitely give yourself plenty of space and um, clean up after yourself. Um, today, I was very careful not to lose my grocery bag into the water and tied it down under my foot. So that is respecting our water, the land, and your fellow anglers, and just enjoying and being safe and friendly while you're out on the water. I'm um, also selective harvesting. Um, these are some of my favorite anglers that always share their pictures with us. Uh, the whole family goes out, all three or four generations, actually, and um, they keep the medium-sized striped bass, like the two to three pounders. But if they're really little or really big, they actually put them right back in and that lets them grow, that lets them reproduce and it's more fun for everybody on the water too, right? Um, letting them grow and create more little fish. Um, and then preserve your passion and share your interest and pass it on to others. Uh, so when you go out, take the little ones with you, take your friend and their kids, um, whatever works to keep our community growing on the water and educating each other and making it fun and safe for everyone. And of all, all things rolled into one, it's fish responsibly. Just be conscious when you're out there. Um, you know, uh, honestly, bluegill are really hard to clean. And the bigger they are, the healthier they are and they're going to spawn in our waters and give something fun for the kids to do. And we have ponds all over the valley and up north um, with our stocked fish. Up north definitely stays cooler, so you have more trout opportunities, but they're not always big. So keep that in mind when you're catching and releasing them. It's really hard to clean a small fish and um, it's, more, it's definitely more worth it 
to um, catch the bigger ones and get the bigger fillets out of them. So before you go, check the weather like I did today a few times throughout the day, trying to gauge my timing out there. Um, TakeMeFishing.org is one of our community sponsors, and they have some really great tips and tricks, including a fishing checklist. Uh, make sure you have your license. 12 and older, that helps stock our waters too. Um, if you forget and you're on your way out there, most places have cell service now. Pull over, get online, get on site, and now licensing.com, and you can get your license, screenshot it, just make sure that your phone is charged, um, and that way the game warning can see it while you're out there. And know your bag limits. Um, most of our ponds are three um, fish limits, and that means three total fish no matter what species it is. And we even have endangered species. So sometimes people think the razorback sucker is a carp, which it definitely is not. And so we want to preserve our endangered species. Um, they are very important to our ecosystem. So leave them there, make sure you put them right back nice and safe. Have extra garbage bags in case it gets windy and you got garbage all over the place. And check our fishing report. It's going to be even better than before. We're finishing up the website right now and our fishing reports are going to be pretty quick. Um, so anytime we see fishing or stocking, we can upload it right away onto the website. If there's any questions, please feel free to type them in or raise your hand or whatever you need to do. Um, so we are just beginning with this awesome week of cramming all kinds of fishing info at you. Um, one of my favorite things is our local lures. A lot of, we have some really creative uh, guys in Nevada, a uh, people period, that make some awesome lures and flies. So we're going to start tonight with some local lures. Here's a picture of one up top here. And we're gonna end the week with Jan tying some of his awesome flies. And then um, tonight at seven, after we grab some dinner, we're gonna have Chris Crookshanks with some awesome outdoor adventures chasing our native trout and talking about the fish slam. So um, check those out. If you haven't signed up yet, it's never too late. You just click on the link and it'll register you and you can log right in. I think that's it. So, um, Trying to think what other, oh, so um, thank you all for attending first off. Saw some comments. Thank you for hosting Jan and Nicole with me tonight. We do have a survey on your way out. Please fill that out. It's very important to us. If there's something else you're looking for, let us know as well. And um, oh, some people um, thought it was kind of gross to put live bait onto your hook. Totally understandable. Um, you can definitely like, um, well, and some, a lot of our waters don't allow fish or fish parts. The Colorado River system is one of the only waters in Nevada that allows fish or fish parts. And so you aren't supposed to transport live bait, period. Definitely have your receipt on you. Um, if you catch your bait fish, which we also have a cast net video for you, if you catch your live bait, it has to be used there and released there. You can't bring it back. You can't do, save it for later. So I do recommend anchovies on the Colorado River, and you can chop them up. Um, and they're already dead and totally frozen, but you want to keep them really frozen so they stay good. Um, but that's when you would double hook it, kind of like I did with the ham, and go through the eyes. But there, it's not gross because it's totally frozen at that point. Um, if you don't want to deal with any of that, that's totally fair. And power bait actually makes some really cool worms and they stink really bad, even better than real worms, I would say. And um, I'm not allowed to do that in the office too much, which is sorting bait for our events because of the smell. <laughs> and there's even grubs, uh, there's maggots, anything gross. Power bait has literally created a fake version and you don't have to add any more smell to it, but you can if you want. Or you yeah, add like on option of everything. Everything, lots of options. Um, so I hope that answered some of those questions too. Um, even like we're gonna talk about in the next episode, 
sorry, I have one of the spinning rods here, but I even have like a little um, rainbow trout swim bait, spinner bait. Uh, these are great. It looks like a little fry. So there you go. You don't have to use a fish there either. And they even have like stinky baits. But it's all in timing too. And I highly recommend just practicing and making it look like a real fish. All right, so we're going to, we have four more minutes for questions before we have to log off and start the next session. So thank you all for joining. And if you have any more questions, we'll be here. Abby, I'm gonna stop sharing real quick so I can grab the regulations link. Cause we talked about, you mentioned a couple of things of what you can and cannot do. So we do have a full fishing regulations book. We have a, um, a digital copy. So I'll drop that link in the chat, but you can also go to your local NDAO office and pick up a physical copy as well. And I do have to say, um, I don't know what happened with the update recently on e-regulations. It used to just be our regulations in a PDF form, but they're copying and transforming it to text. And it's not transferring as we would want it read is the best way for me to put it. Um, I did get a call the other day and somebody didn't understand where they could use live bait. And one more reason I brought that up. Um, and it says in the regulations about using it only in the Colorado River, but it's a general regulation. So if you look up it by sections, it may not say anything about it. So definitely try to read it all. Feel free to call us and let us, you know, if you have any questions that you can't find. And I do recommend our NRSs. It's literally an abbreviation of NRS and usually around 5.30 to 5.40. Um, you can literally dig into the Nevada regulation statutes or the um, NCAs. So the stuff made by the Nevada, or not, or no, sorry, Nevada commissions. Uh, so the commission laws as well which are worked on with our biologists. And we can help read those to you guys too. Definitely don't want you guys going out there, getting into trouble or anything like that. So just let us know. All else fails, use a spinner bait, a rooster tail, um, almost anything will bite those. And you can always put a little garlic scent on them as well. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Nicole. Thank you all for coming. Nice to see some names. We recognize too. Thanks, guys. All right. Hopefully, see you all in a little bit.